Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Vonique Tude, and this is NB12 for Wednesday, April 18th, 2012. Broadcasting from the Cable 12 studios on Robinson Road. In news tonight, angry PLP supporters gather in one of this island's oldest inner-city communities as the Prime Minister greets residents. Members of the Democratic National Alliance march against violence as the country records its 39th murder for 2012. The government spends $1.1 million to restore Pompeii Museum. Plus, we'll tell you what's happening now at the Nassau Container Port. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. Your NB12 starts right now. Progressive Liberal Party supporters gathered this afternoon as Prime Minister Hubert Ingram arrived in the Bainstown and Grantstown constituency to conduct a walkabout. But Mr. Ingram never actually came face to face with those PLPs. The constituency is a PLP stronghold. However, the FNM leader is attempting to change that. Charisma Robinson has the details of today's tour. Prime Minister and Free National Movement leader Hubert Ingram, along with the FNM's candidate for the area, John Bostwick, today conducted a walkabout in the Bainstown and Grandstown constituency, making an appeal directly to the opposition's core supporters. Bostwick says today's walkabout was the beginning of his party's plan to revitalize over-the-hill communities, bringing about new economic opportunities with stable jobs for residents of those areas. We got a lot of plans. The PM is here to show that the government of the Bahamas is committed to being in Grandstown, committed to the true urban redevelopment and true liberation of the people of being in Grandstown. As the FNM's motorcade moved through the area, scores of residents stood outside their homes to greet Mr. Ingram. FNM! All the way! But not everyone was happy about the Prime Minister's visit. As Ingram and FNM supporters walked and drove through the community, a large crowd of unruly PLP supporters were prepared to come face to face with the entourage, holding up signs that read, You are not my papa. Because they put too much money in the infrastructure in the country than, than, than the people. We need the people. If we get the people. So he got when being done. No boy, I ain't supporting Papa. Papa killing people, I ain't supporting them. Papa won't put people in jail for too much time, man. Papa ain't doing yeah. right for us. And be young. Papa ain't doing your children. Tell him take care of your children if he's a part of the nation. Take care of your children. The FNM leader was expected to visit the Sarah Robinson Park on Meadow Street as well. However, once officials were notified of the crowd's unruly behavior, police adjusted their route. The party's campaign spokesperson, Tommy Turnquest, alleges that the majority of PLP supporters in the area were bused there to disrupt the FNM's walkabout. In its 2012 manifesto, the party pledged to create an urban certification fund that will help the restoration of homes in designated over-the-hill communities. But that's not all. If returned to office, Ingram says his party will begin planning to create a native food market in the inner city. Reporting for NB12, I'm Charisma Robinson. Dozens of Democratic National Alliance supporters took to the streets this morning for a march against crime. During a news conference held after that march, DNA leader Brando McCartney highlighted aspects of his party's national crime plan. Jasmine Bonamy was there and filed this report. Carrying placards, chanting, and all dressed in green, DNA members took to the streets not only to show their numbers, but also to highlight their national crime plan. This morning's march got off to a late but strong start with scores of DNA supporters marching from Arawak Key to Rawson Square. The party's aim to draw attention to the rising crime rate. DNA leader Branville McCartney insists previous governments have not done enough to tackle the issue that continues to mushroom. And if the DNA wins the next general election, McCartney says their first plan of action is addressing legislation, in particular the package of crime bills passed last year. We will change that. I certainly do not vote for that. If you murder a bum, if you murder someone who lives on the streets, if you murder anybody, that murderer, if you found guilty of murder, that murderer ought to be executed. Ought to be executed. 
We are very serious about that. Drastic times require drastic measures. Putting all murderers to death is a key component in the fight against crime, says McCartney. In the past 12 years, many convicted murderers have escaped the death penalty due to significant rulings by the Privy Council, which has quashed a number of death sentences. Under the amended penal code, the death penalty is now mandatory for anyone convicted of killing a member of the following organizations. The Police Force, the Defense Force, Department of Customs, Department of Immigration, the Judiciary and Prison Services System. The death penalty is also mandatory if a person is convicted of murdering someone during a robbery, rape, kidnapping, or act of terrorism. But McCarty insists these amended laws are just not tough enough, especially when it comes to bail for those charged with murder. At the end of the day, I would really hope that the government would step up to the plate and show before another life is taken that they are serious about crime. Don't come on television. Uh, like, don't come on television and say that you're serious about crime, you just pass some bills that not one has had any effect. We need to look at many of these laws under the penal notice, under the, uh, the penal code. We need to update and increase, increase penalties in many instances. Many, many instances, persons and these, these crimes are not, are not uh, dealt with properly. And we, that is one way we go about it by making an example. It's a message that crime activist and DNA candidate for Bain and Grants Town Rodney Moncur agrees with. Moncur, who has had several anti-crime marches over the past two years, says he believes the DNA is the only party that is serious about eliminating crime. Let Ingram and Christie play their games. Their dangerous foolishness will last until May 7th. And then justice, peace and security shall come on May 8th. When the, DNA, when the DNA emerges victorious in the general election. Now that march did not end in Rawson Square, the group also headed down Parliament Street and then on to Shirley Street before ending back at Arawak Key. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. During this morning's march, the DNA also advocated for the implementation of a sex offenders registry. Veteran lawyer and DNA candidate for Mount Moriah, Wayne Monroe, unveiled how the DNA plans to keep track of convicted sex offenders if the DNA wins the next general election. We will create a sexual offense register. It will be graded. Not only will you know who are sexual offenders, but there are some classes of sexual offenders who are sexual predators you will know who the sexual predators are that have been released. The idea of a sex offenders registry was renewed on the heels of the murder of 11-year-old Marco Archer last September. The DNA says it would pass a law called Marco's Law. Monroe says laws like this should have been passed under previous governments. Mr. Christie and Mr. Ingram, it sense you love your people so much, why did you not do this? before the DNA pointed it out to you. The sheer answer to that is, as Mr. Monka said, they are grossly incompetent. If they knew about it, they should have done it. So either they didn't know about it and they are dumb, or they did know about it and did nothing about it, and then they are not only dumb, but also dangerous. The Prime Minister said the government was open to debate on a sex offender's register, but that debate never took place. Another man has been shot to death in the Capitol. Police say around 8.30 last night, the victim was at an establishment on Lightbourne Avenue off Farrington Road when he was approached by a male who shot him multiple times about the body. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene by EMS personnel. Police say they are now questioning a 20-year-old male resident of Ross Corner in connection with this recent murder. Meantime, this rock crusher resident we interviewed at the scene last night said the level of crime in that area is becoming unbearable. Well, all I know it was a shooting. Shots I heard. And really, the crime, it, it really have to stop. It really was going on too long. And besides, we have a lot of children who lives around here. And every time it happens, it happened in my mother's yard. And it, it, she can't even live in her own house. My brother can't sleep in the house because every all the time, too much shots, too much crimes, too much foolishness, too much drugs. It really have to stop. 